One of the big downsides for me from switching from Premiere to DaVinci was losing all my plugins that I use to enhance my workflow. So ever since the big switch, I've been really on the hunt for looking for tools that will just make my life easier editing in DaVinci. And I wanna share a few apps today that have made my life easier and maybe they'll make your life easier as well. So let's take a look. I've mentioned this app in a bunch of different videos, but I still use it for DaVinci Resolve as well, and that's Post Haste. This is a must have if you're any kind of creator. It's really simple to use, it's free, and you'll thank yourself in the long run when you put together a solid folder structure to follow. There's a few templates you can choose from. I've built my own folder structure and I'll show you what every single project I do looks like. So let's have a look here. This is a super simple app couple of templates to choose from and if you just dive over into templates so you can see that you can actually have templated project files and this will rename to whatever you rename the actual project and then it'll be all ready and all set up to go this is what all my projects actually look like and i will add or subtract folders depending on every single use case because i've found that this is a nice happy medium of not having too many folders right off the get-go because sometimes that can be confusing and on the other hand you can always just add if you're adding stuff into footage or assets or whatever it may be so let's hop over into new project on default when you download post haste there's a bunch of different parameters i've subtracted all of them except for client project name and date and this is pretty much how i'll do all my projects uh, so if i'm actually doing some freelance projects i'll have a client date and a project name but for this let's take off both of these and just do plugins i use for no. so we're going to create that project we're going to place it in a folder and now we can see plugins i use for davinci resolve is ready to go this folder structure is really the foundation of every single project that i do that might be a little bit of a confusing statement but it will make a lot more sense as we go through the video please get organized and download post haste this next app is absolutely priceless it helps me keep organized and it does a ton of other stuff it's called super bins the big thing i missed from premiere when switching over to resolve was a plugin called watchtower and in my opinion super bins actually is a step above watchtower so i'm going to show you why the folder structure that we made outside side is actually pretty important now that we are about to start editing in Resolve. So I've opened Superbins and it automatically syncs to the project that I have open. And now I'm going to set my project media folder and I'm just going to navigate to the exact same folder, this folder. So I'm going to select that. So I'm going to come down here and hit sync. Now it's just telling me everything that's unsynced. So let's actually not create a bin for project files or, or exports or documents. And yeah, let's sync everything else to the project. So if I bring up my project folder, you can see that it's synced everything from here into DaVinci perfectly. So now I pretty much just treat this as my actual editing project and that these are all your bins. So if I was to create an A roll footage and then B roll, when I come back to Resolve, it's already in there. At first, I didn't actually love that this was a standalone app, but it actually allows the option to have hotkeys. So you can see here, at any time I can open my project folder, which is whatever media folder I've selected by pressing Command Option P. So if I just hit Command Option P, it'll take me exactly to my folder structure, which that alone is worth the money by far. There are a few things that I never wanted to sync, and that is project files, exports, documents, and and I never actually wanted to sync sound effects now that we have the sound effects folder in there. If we make any proxy folders, we don't want any proxies. Sound effects, we don't want the documents, we don't want the exports, and we don't want project files. It'll never import any of those folders that are created. Now let's take a look at this top section here, which holds a lot of powerful functions. So if I just dive into paste auto, you can see that there's a couple different options here. If we were to download something here, let's make images, go into assets, save settings, a baby sloth. Okay, so we got this, let's copy this image and because we input it into the assets folder, it can, you can see it's working in the background here and now it's in a project. And not only that, if we right click and reveal in the finder, it's actually saved in our assets folder within our project. And that is just the tip of the iceberg for super bins. You can monitor a folder. So if you're saving stuff to your downloads, it will immediately copy and paste it into the proper folder structures or 
paste bins. There's just so many ways that you can use this. <laughs> Again, I could probably make an entire video just dedicated to super bins, but yeah, highly recommend it if you are serious about editing. It is not free, but definitely one of the most helpful plugins I could recommend. I mentioned this app before, but Soundly is something that takes my videos to an entirely different level, and the integration in DaVinci is just so good. Soundly has a free version, so you have no excuse to not up your sound design game. I also quickly want to note that they make a VST plugin called Place It, and I'll show you this in just one minute, but this is also free. Okay, let's take a quick look at this example here. So we got some quick shots here and no sound design. It would be great if we had maybe a riser and maybe a whoosh, but that sounded like water. And the great thing about Soundly is that I can literally type in whoosh with the word water and we now have a ton of results. Okay, so I've listened to a bunch and this is the one that I'm gonna go with. And all I have to do to bring it into DaVinci is highlight the part of the audio that I want and click and drag it into my timeline and it's there. Now if we bring up our media pool here, you can see that it dropped it right into my sound effects library. And if we click and reveal this in Finder, it goes right to my sound effects folder within the project that I'm working on. But that's because in settings, you can actually set up the folder that you want it to save as your default location. So every time I sound design a project, I just set my folder. And that's also why I turned it off in Superbins is because it's going to get dragged in DaVinci and copy over into your finder at the same time. I wasn't even a big fan of sound design before using Soundly, and now it's one of my favorite points in the edit process. I've literally typed whatever I can think of into the search bar, and I've always had a result. So just with a couple search terms, now I have sound effects in my project, and here's where we're at. Okay, so this is way too strong at the end, so I want to show you Soundly place it. So let's just place it on this clip. So this is the app, let's dive into some presets and we want it to be, let's just see what this sounds like, Neighbors TV. I actually kinda like that. Uh, headphones, outdoor. This is such a great plugin. I love that it's free. It's so handy doing sound design and it really simplifies the process of creating environments. 10 out of 10 recommend both these products. This is a little bit of a different one, but it's super handy once it's installed. It's called Rocket. If you use emojis, I promise you will appreciate it. I never really did in any of my work, but this app has made it super accessible. So this is the app, super easy to use and it's free. So it's kind of a no brainer here. So let me show you how it works. So this is a great use case where I actually used it. The only difference here is it has to be a basic text and not a text plus note. So this is what I'm used to getting, trying to copy and paste a emoji into any sort of text in Premiere or in DaVinci. But using the basic text, we can put in anything we want. To activate the app, you just type a colon and then you get access to all the emojis. Super great, super easy. It makes it so accessible. Definitely a handy one to have. Okay, something that's always made me a little bit livid in DaVinci Resolve is the fact that there's no snapping in the window. Basic text is pretty much the only thing that you can select and snap around, but even then it's not super helpful if you have multiple and you're trying to distribute or align them all to the same spot. But the same guy who made Super Bins also just came out with a tool that's so handy for aligning stuff. And it does even more than text. So let's take a look at just what it can do. Bring back the little baby sloth guys over here. So let's say I want them all to be kind of on one line. All I have to do is just hit center and now they're all on the exact same plane. But what if I wanted them all to have the proper spacing in between, you would just hit distribute horizontal spacing and now it's perfect. Same thing goes with text. You can like align them all, which is so handy. Okay, so here I have a title made with my Creative Herb text pack and let's just clean it up so it's actually looking nice. So the first thing we're gonna do is align everything to the center of the frame. That's great. And now let's start eyeballing. We want this to be in here a little bit smaller. Same thing with this guy, a little bit smaller. Actually, maybe not that small, but we want it obviously all to be centered and distributed properly on the bottom and top. So let's center everything up again and then vertically. So that was just a small change, but 
let's say if this was way down here, center everything up and then vertically align it, you can see that it immediately spaced it out. This is super, super handy. This tool is free. Bill Justice absolutely kills it. God bless his soul. And I'm sure you're familiar with the classics if you're looking for presets, title packs, or just transitions. A few that I use are Motion VFX, which is one of the biggest hubs for DaVinci Resolve. As well, I use Visual VFX Transitions. I made a whole video on this that's already up on my channel. What you may not know is that I've made my own title pack. I think it's really good, and maybe you will too if you give it a shot. There's a discount code in the description below. So maybe take a look. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you want more content like this. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Peace.